In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the current conditions, the upcoming pattern, a potential big snowstorm actually in the eastern United States, and then also a very large cool down that's going to be pretty persistent in the eastern half of the country for quite a while in the upcoming pattern. Now let's get straight into things, and first things first, we're taking a look at our current conditions here. As you can see, we have plenty going on out west here with this big, big time snowstorm happening here for the Rockies this is our blizzard. We actually do have blizzard warnings up currently as well. And then we have some thunderstorm activity going on in here. Unfortunately, there was a very large tornado that took place near Little Rock, Arkansas yesterday. We're still awaiting more information on what went down with that, how strong of a tornado it was. Um, so we're not going to speculate, but it was a very large and very damaging tornado, unfortunately. Um, and we're expecting more severe weather today. We're going to be talking about that all at the end of the video. If that's what you're here for, you can use the slider bar down below to find that portion of the video. But it could get uh, even worse with the severe weather coming up uh, with our risk levels we're going to be in. Now let's zoom into the northwest real quickly. It's a very active current pattern. We have these isolated showers associated with this storm that are in this area just really moving on shore. As you can see, and this is bringing snowfall for the mountains. Rainfall for the coastal regions, obviously. Uh, that's how it kind of goes up here in the northwest. Now, we are seeing some snowfall around here for the Rockies and portions of the northwest in here. Uh, but really, the more persistent snowfall is when you go further west out here. Uh, so all of these regions in here for Wyoming, Montana, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, seeing some of that, and then northern Colorado as well. Uh, so we'll just take a more uh, focused look at that area there. Uh, it's actually happening as far south as southern Utah as well. Um, so we've been seeing a lot of these blizzard conditions starting up in here. Um, and this is just going to be a really crazy snowstorm for a lot of these areas. Uh, so we're going to talk about that on the model guidance in a little while. Um, let's see. We do have some thunderstorm activity south of the border here uh, in Mexico. And a lot of this is trying to cross the border here. I've been watching this because these look like a lot of potent thunderstorms here. But southern Texas there, the very southern tip of Texas, you might get some of these uh, moving your way. That would not surprise me one bit. We're having a lot of thunderstorm activity still around for a lot of these regions. So we're on the lookout for that as well as severe weather is still uh, currently taking place for a lot of Missouri, uh, Tennessee, Arkansas as late as uh, mo as recently as about 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Uh, and then Tennessee and Kentucky are seeing a lot of those thunderstorms at this point now as well. Uh, now, as we look towards the kind of mid-Atlantic and northeast, we see that there is uh, some activity in here with some showers uh, around for New York, Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia, Virginia, these areas for the most part, and even up and through New England, we've seen these showers moving across and mostly greens really, so indicating light to moderate rainfall. Uh, but there has been some of those yellows popping up, especially here back on the western end of things. We'll see that move in. That's where things are going to be more like uh, moderate to maybe bordering on heavy as far as the rainfall is concerned. Uh, and this is all just moving, obviously, from west to east, uh, kind of across the nation here. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at some modeled guidance, and then we're going to break down the Storm Prediction Center. All right, now here we are taking a look at the precipitation type. You can see how this snowfall really expands for this region over the next um few hours or even in through a little bit later today mid-morning this is going to be about mid-morning this is going to be as we're heading towards the afternoon where things will kind of transition to lightening up here in the mountainous rockies uh, and kind of getting heavier here for the northern plains uh, where this blizzard is really going to uh, ramp up and just cause so much snowfall for a lot of these regions and here uh, it's going to be absolutely wild we do see today that severe weather begins to develop. We can see a warm front about like this, and that's just causing a lot of impacts in here. Uh, really, really crazy stuff. We're going to talk all about the severe weather a little bit later on, but this is just classic. We see the cold front underneath. Uh, we see the warm front to the north. I mean, it doesn't get more classic than this, really. Uh, and that Gulf air is just really able to make its way north into these areas. It's going to be 80s for three days in a row here in Virginia. Uh, in April. So that's actually a lot earlier than typical for 80s to persistently take place like that uh, here in Virginia. So I can tell you firsthand for my area, and maybe you're seeing the same thing, uh, it's just going to be abnormally uh, warm for a lot of these regions. And, and there's a lot of cold air bottled up for the West, but Jetstream's doing about like this. Uh, you see that very potent kink there? 
Uh, I usually associate that with severe weather oftentimes because that usually means that some more warm air is rapidly heading north uh, in these areas uh, and some cold air is rapidly moving in behind it in these areas when you see that strong just kink there uh, there so that that is um, that has a lot to do with this what we're seeing the severe weather event and this is generally going to be pushing uh, eastward over time and we will see a cool down eventually um, whereas the warm-up is kind of going to be progressively also moving from west to east as well so let's keep going on with this we see more severe weather take place wednesday into thursday more for the central eastern united states i would call it Still, we're seeing this warm front in here, cold front down here. So things are progressing further eastward. Um, still going to be warm for a lot of the eastern United States. And then we're going to see this cold front move through, potentially bring some thunderstorms. And that's going to be Thursday. Um, so as we move through with that. And then we kind of get into this flat jet stream, kind of like this. Uh, so the warm air is, well, the cold air is kind of balancing right here. Uh, where a lot of it is, you know, trying to teeter-totter, but it's going to do the opposite of what I just drew, actually. It looks like the cold air is going to eventually establish itself here, and a lot of the warm air is going to redirect itself out west. So we'll see that take place. As we get our next storm on shore right here by about next weekend, this is going to be Saturday and Sunday, April 16th, 17th. Uh, and that brings more snowfall to similar regions, by the way. Much more minor storm, it looks like, but it does bring snowfall to these regions, potential severe weather uh, trying to take place in here as well. That's Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, but look at this. This is our major potential snowstorm in a lot of these regions. We'll take a look at the total snowfall in a little while. But, I mean, just crazy. It's a lot of mixing going on, but that is just wild to see that much snowfall this late in the season um, with basically what is a nor'easter. The jet stream doing about like this. Uh, and this storm really pushing up the eastern seaboard. Uh, we have another storm coming down like this, uh, so at, at the same time. And we see this trough kind of reestablish itself just like this. Uh, so the cold air sticks around for these regions, and the warm air comes up like this. Um, basically, we're going to be stuck in this colder pattern, it looks like, probably from about Friday the 15th all the way till probably Friday the 22nd at least. So a whole week of some cooler temperatures looks to be what this European model is calling for. Let's quickly take a look at the total snowfall. And we can see the two main areas of snowfall here is the blizzard out here, which is a totally separate storm. And then this eastern storm that brings some snowfall to this uh, area number two. This is going to be area number one. Um, so... It's going to be a totally different storm. Moving through these color shades and what they mean, the grays are going to be a dusting, if anything. Blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples will be 6 to 10. Pinks will be 10 to 20. Your pastel blues are going to be your uh, 20 to 30 inch amounts, which we don't see any of that for area number 2. We do see the pinks, which is, again, 10 to 20 there for some of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, uh, but we don't see anything above that for this region. But area number 1 does have these pastels where we move into the 20 to 30 inch range. And even some of those pastel purples, I see some of that going on in here and also along the Cascades and Sierra Nevadas in here. Um, so that's going to be, once we move into those purple shades, where we're moving from like 36 to 48 inches plus in a lot of those regions. So tons and tons of snowfall is expected over the next 10 days. We talked about this yesterday, but we're obviously learning more and more about it every single day. Now let's go ahead and talk about that upcoming temperature pattern overall. So right now we're really bottled up with this cold here diving in the west with that blizzard. We have near normal conditions that are going to be warming throughout the day today. So we see that really warm up. This is by the high temperatures today. Things really flare up here for the severe weather regions, but also for the east coast you see we get some of these darker reds, uh, which is going to be about 10 to 15 degrees above normal. These areas here in the plains, I'm going to circle what I'm talking about here, where it gets kind of brownish, that is where we're 15 to 25 degrees above normal so very very significantly above normal and things flare up again for Wednesday um, we could see really ahead of the cold front you can t you can literally tell where the cold front is mostly set up I mean it's not hard to see it's low mostly in here warm front somewhere in there very potent pattern we're in and as things move eastward this is the high temperatures on Thursday this is why Virginia is seeing uh three days of 80s because there's still going to be these far above normal temperatures around for the eastern seaboard by the high temperatures on Thursday, but the cold is getting closer and closer. 
But by Friday, like we mentioned, that cold is going to be trying to move in. It looks a little bit near normal for the eastern seaboard, um, but it's going to be trying to move in Saturday. Uh, it's, it's moving closer to the east Sunday. Here we have something probably like this going on for this time frame where the warmth is really struggling to move in, but it will. It has to move in somewhere, uh, and we see it really start to move up like this into the west. Uh, and then the cold really moves into the east. So this this is the trend by this point. That's Monday. Tuesday really dives in. It's Tuesday, April 19th. Uh, the greens are going to be about 10 to 15 degrees below your average temperature. That's Fahrenheit. The blues within the greens, you see some of those. That's 15 to 25 degrees below what your normal temperature is. And then the magentas are 25 to 35 degrees, what your average temperature is. So if you're 30 degrees below normal, uh, let's say your average temperature is 60, your average high temperature is 60 this time of year. I think that's pretty uh, fair to estimate. Uh, your your high temperature during this time frame would actually be 30 if you're 30 degrees below normal, which is just incredibly cold compared to what is normal. Uh, as we move towards Wednesday, you can see this really centers itself over the eastern United States, probably doing something about like this. Absolutely nuts. Uh, and then Thursday, Friday time frame, it's still around, but the warm really establishes itself over the west. So a very clear trough in the east, ridge in the west pattern seems to be a likelihood at this point, unfortunately, for a lot of people. Um, this time of year is just really not when people are in the mood for this usually, but this looks to be like what's going to occur. Now, for those out west, you're probably going to be loving this after that blizzard hits, just that things will warm up for the most part, and there will be some nicer days ahead. Uh, but out east, we're going to get those cold conditions moving our way for quite a while. Like I said, maybe approaching about a week at least there. Uh, coming up very, very soon over the coming days. Late this week, it will be starting uh, and lasting quite a while after that point. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to break down the Storm Prediction Center because there's a lot to go over. Now for day one here, we're taking a look here at our categorical outlook. Tuesday, April 12th is day one here. We have Three general thunderstorm risks, one for the northwest, one for the four corner states, and then one very large one here in the central and eastern United States. Uh, these general thunderstorm risk areas is where general thunderstorms are expected, but no severe weather is necessarily expected. We have our marginal risk area there in the darker green. That's where isolated severe weather is looking very likely. Um, and then we see in the yellow area, that's where scattered severe weather is likely. And then we have two orange regions here, one there for Dallas, Fort Worth, and areas south of there, and then one there for Kansas City and areas north of there. Uh, and these are areas where things will become a lot more widespread and higher just percentages overall with the severe weather. Now for the individual outlooks, we have our day one wind outlook first up. This is all going to be percentages based on 25 miles from a given location. So for instance, the first layer here, this green area is going to be your 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location. But from this point forward, I'm just going to say the percentages. It's all within 25 miles of a given location. The yellow area is a 15% chance of damaging wind. And then the red areas here, we have two red areas. That's where we have a 30% chance of damaging wind. Let's move on to that hail outlook for today. And it's the same percentages. We have 5% chance there in the green, 15% uh, chance there in the yellow, and then two 30% chance areas there in the two red areas. And then we have our hatched risk here for a lot of these regions, indicating that two inch diameter hail or more is looking fairly likely. Uh, so that's really, really bad news, obviously. Now the tornado outlook, we have a 2% chance here in the greens, 5% chance there in the brown, and then a 10% chance of tornadoes there in the yellow. But we also have a hatched area in that yellow area indicating EF2 or higher tornadoes will be possible uh, today, or at least uh, looking fairly possible because it's always possible, right? But it's looking more possible than normal, more, uh, more slightly likely. Uh, I wouldn't say likely, but there's a percentage chance uh, that it looks like the, the parameters will be there uh, to support that type of a tornado, uh, specifically in the hatch region. That's a good way to put it. Now, for the day two categorical outlook, we have two general thunderstorm risk areas, one mini one there in Oregon, and then one very large one here in the eastern and central United States. Again, this encompasses a lot of the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes and the Gulf states, so a lot of different areas. We have two marginal risk areas in there, one here for kind of the northeast, and then one there stretching from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to Canada. Uh, and this is where, again, 
isolated severe weather is looking possible. Now the yellow area is our slight risk area and again scattered severe weather is expected in there and then our very very large area in here orange area is our enhanced risk where widespread severe weather is looking really really likely at this point. Now for the individual outlooks for day two our wind outlook we have a 5% chance there in the two green areas a 15% chance there in the yellow area and then a 30% chance there in the red area and again we have the hatch risk area indicating extremely strong winds and damaging winds will be possible in this region uh, with this line of storms that's going to develop. So we're looking for especially damaging winds in that region to be possible. Now for the hail outlook, we have a little bit of a, a lighter percentage here, which is usual as things are moving further and further eastward. Uh, we have 5% uh, chance of hail here in the two green areas there. Uh, and then we have a 15% chance of hail there in the yellow area. And then we have that hatched area indicating EF, or not EF, Two inch diameter more or uh, or larger hail is going to be possible in that region. Now to talk about EF scale, let's talk about the tornado outlook. We have a 2% chance here in the two green regions there. We have a 5% chance there in the brown. And then we have a very, very large 10% chance area there of tornadoes uh, stretching over many different states. I think uh, I would say about eight states in there. Uh, in that 10% area, and that's also completely hatched. Again, indicating that EF2 or larger tornadoes are looking uh, fairly possible throughout the day tomorrow on Wednesday, April 13th. So we're going to be watching for that as well. We're also unfortunately going to be looking for an upgrade potentially on any of these outlooks because this is so large and looking so bad. I wouldn't be surprised if we got a 15% chance of tornadoes, unfortunately, with how large they've made this 10% area. Uh, very, very bad news there, but stay tuned. Obviously, heed all those warnings, watches, and advisories because uh, there's going to be more updates to come for sure. Now, for day three, things look a lot more minor. We have a general thunderstorm risk here along the Gulf Coast and then up the East Coast where general thunderstorms are expected. And then we have a marginal risk here stretching from the Florida Panhandle all the way up through New England. But that's only where isolated severe weather is expected uh, and things really dial down so far at least to this point, but we could get a slight risk somewhere in there but it at least doesn't look as bad as the two days before it. This will be for April 14th, and that's going to be a Thursday. Now, for today's confidence tab, we're literally at the beginning of all of these events happening, so we're at a five out of six for obvious reasons. Uh, I, I feel very confident in what we've talked about today because it's literally starting now. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Little the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also have to thank our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Holmick, Kalesa, Catbite, Charles Didit, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I would also have to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.